If your shirt matches your shoes and you care about that kind of thing, your strength drops by 10%. So, I don't know what you're talking about. That's fire right there. <laughs> happening it's Friday I'm eating the same thing I do every day babes in the kitchen she made me this awesome awesome gingerbread latte I like big cups and I cannot lie she got that for me because I do I love big cups and I cannot lie <laughs> so weird. I am so weird and then she also got this there are some BK free Green pans. I was actually talking about that Ezekiel bread behind you. Oh. I'm kidding, I wasn't. Oh my God. Every day awesome. I eat my Ezekiel bread toast, but those BPA, I'm really, really excited to use those. Yep. Super stoked for that. Sure. Bust out those green pans because this pan is not green. It's definitely not green. It's probably leaching chemicals into our body as it we is. speak. It's Just being bad. in this room. Throw the pan out quickly. It's toxic. You're so weird. <laughs> Babe, what did we put in, in the coffee this morning? This is Courtney's awesome coffee. Show them. It's behind you. Um. Well, for Steve, we did some of this. I know it sounds disgusting, but it's unflavored. It's this beef gelatin. Okay, I know. It sounds gross. It does sound that. gross, but uh, I can guarantee you guys it does not taste like anything. We did a little bit of this collagen creamer, and it's made with coconut milk, and it's gingerbread flavor, so super holiday festive. And it has like some healthy fats, and has a little bit of protein, yeah, and it, it makes it all some... frothy. Healthy fats and, and there's protein in it. So there's probably 10 grams of, 7 to 10 grams of protein just in that little gingerbread latte. Are we uh, going to go work out at the gym after this? We are. I'm Which gym? Yesterday culture. somebody didn't want to work out at the gym. I just wanted, we don't have a Stairmaster yet. No, we need a Stairmaster. And I just want to do a little bit of like hit on the stairs. So. But so today I'm you're working out at the gym. Mm -hmm. Alright. We'll be there. Okay. Let's go to the gym. Yo, how about that transition? We were at home eating, now we're here in the gym. So, I just took some pre-workout. Jake, did you just take some pre-workout? Oh, yeah. We're upstairs in our office. This is actually Jake's office. Mine's it's over there. Office, man. You want to be in there? Yeah, I don't have a desk yet. Well, put your desk in here, man. I ordered the, it yesterday. The, I'm fr we're freaking out because the gym's coming along nicely, but we still have so much to do for that January grand opening. You guys can still actually win a trip through Gymshark to our grand opening. It's gonna be sick. We got more to come and on that. Us. And through us? Yeah. So many things, so many activities. Today though, we're training chest and back supersets. So Monday, chest and triceps. Tuesday, back and biceps. Then it was legs, day off. Now chest and back superset. And a couple reasons for our training like this. Right now, I don't train, you know, I could train chest and back superset also in one workout earlier on in the week. But I don't because those are more of my heavy strength training days. So it's going to be sh shorter rest periods, sorry, longer rest periods. It's going to be fewer numbers of sets and reps and really more taxing on that CNS. But what, that is, it, what we're doing now is because it's my weak area, I'm focusing on this muscle group, these muscle groups twice in a week. Today, all about higher volume stuff. So. The reason why, the reason why you want to superset chest and back if it's your weakness, we're able to get more done in a shorter period of time. And what that means is working an antagonist, so our chest, our back is our antagonist of our chest, and our chest is our antagonist of our back. What we're able to do while we're working our chest, the back is resting and vice versa. Meaning, if I were to do triceps and chest and superset those things, by working my triceps, it's going to affect how strong I am in my chest and my triceps might fail first and I'm not able to complete the final set. That doesn't happen when you train chest and back. I can do lots of pull-ups and what I'm doing is I'm stretching actually and that's actually beneficial for our back training and our chest training. As we're working back, we're stretching our chest. That, that is actually a great thing. A lot of cool things happen when you do that. Uh, also, it allows us to actually train our chest and back more often in, in one week. What we're doing is essentially able to get twice, work out each chest and back twice in a week by supersetting this on one day. Um, it's, it's, so it's easy to hit our weaknesses more often. And we're only able to do that if you're working antagonistic muscles. So this type of workout, this superset high volume, it's best for the second day of the week. Like I said, a little bit more taxing on our central nervous system. The, the beginning part of the week because we're going really heavy. This part of the week, higher reps, higher volume, we're getting a lot more of a cardiovascular workout as well. So that actually brings me to my next point. 
by supersetting these things, you're actually able to get in some cardio. Your heart's gonna start racing, muscular endurance come into play, and really it's more of an Arnold style of training, so if I'm looking to get lean, this is a great way to do that, working on my weaknesses and also trying to get lean. You don't have to do as much cardio training like this. At first, if you're not used to training with higher volume and less rest times, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna need to you know, catch, catch some air, you're gonna start feeling winded quicker. But as you continue to train like this, it's gonna get easier and easier. So it's one of the reasons I love, love, love training like this. And then lastly, and, and you, could, you, know, you could argue that this is the most important, important reason, and it kinda has to do with everything. Um, so in an acidic intramuscular environment will increase GH response. So as we are working these two areas, as we are doing supersets, you know, we're getting less rest time, we're building up that lactic acid, back and forth, back and forth. So when you have that acidic intermuscular environment, what that's gonna do is drive up GH. And that really, you know, it happens, it comes to play into when we do occlusion band training for our biceps and triceps. So that is scientifically proven out there, and this is, this is done more so on a day like today than it is when you do straight sets for chest and you rest two minutes in between sets. That's gonna be great for strength, but when we're talking about GH response, you know, this is a great way to increase that acidic environment. So Jake's gonna be doing it. I'm gonna be doing it. We're gonna rock and roll. The girls are down there training, I think, right now. So we're gonna go say what's up to them. And then later on today, maybe we'll go ice skating. We're here in the desert. We're gonna get a sick pump and just go do this. I'm gonna like a huge speed skater just coming at you. What's up, Apollo Ono? I get a chest and back pump. I don't know if I, you guys have, have you guys met Jason here? So Cal moved back to Phoenix. Um, Cal, that's where he's from. This is Jason. Jason is gonna be filming a lot of these edits or editing filming. You're gonna get to know Jason really well. He's also, well. he likes long walks on the beach. <laughs> um, are you single? Ladies, ladies, and eh, don't, he's working too hard. He has no time for ladies. Way too um, busy. Way too busy, just making hits. We're going under. There's nothing we can do The final hour before we let it go to rest It's such a heartbeat pounding in your chest In this story So, first exercise here we got our inclined barbell bench press We've, we've done our warm up. We're supersetting this. We have 12 to 16 reps on this. We have three sets. Supersetting it with a single arm dumbbell row to your ear. So it's going to be a little bit wider, working a little bit more of that, that posterior delt, also a little bit more trap um, as opposed to pulling it to your hip. Just going to work a little bit more of that lat. Supersetting both of these, we're going to see what we can do for 12 reps today on incline bench. I haven't inclined bench in a minute. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Push. <sighs> 11? What is that? 225 and 275. 275 for 11? Well, failing is the only way where you know you need to start out at. Go to failure. I need to go lighter next set. He's not human. Vanilla Gorilla. 15 for 12 e. We're going on. We're going on There's nothing we can do. The beauty of this gym, you, we have everything. We have everything you need. Power is your thing and strength. That's Jake. If you wanted to get ready for a show, I'm here for more of the aesthetics. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting back in it. Power and strength, definitely Jake. We're gonna have a guy in here all about that athletic functionalness. Jake could do that too. We kind of train and overlap all of it. But we have people in each specific outlet that are very, very good at what they do. That's the best part of fitness culture. That pump, that chest back pump is legendary. Legendary. Higher reps 
hurts so good. Everything today, pretty quick tempo. So as we go higher in reps, the tempo actually speeds up a little bit too. So earlier on in the week, three seconds eccentric on my chest and back day. Now, it's about one, one second eccentric. One second, one second. Eccentric and concentric. So it's not like I'm just out of control. One second squeeze and then down. There was a population study done earlier this year. <clears throat> the ladies love it, but if your shirt matches your shoes and you care about that kind of thing, your strength drops by 10%. So, I don't know what you're talking about. That's fire right there. Straight fire, that's all I know. It might be worth it. That maybe isn't the worst. Is it. that good vibes, Jake? I don't, I don't know, know if it is. Though. I don't know if that is good vibes. <laughs> now we're gonna be doing medium grip rope pull down. So on this one, it's all about getting it down past. Most people when you do a pull down, come out of their chest. I'm gonna try to pull it down and pull apart as I'm pulling it down to my waist. There. 16 reps. I just pause a half second at the bottom enough to get a contraction and let it stretch all the way up. You can do these on a normal seated one. We have to do them on the ground because we don't have a seated lat pull down. It's such a heartbeat, found in your chest. Super setting pull downs, incline, dumbbell chest flies. And what we're doing, getting a nice stretch. And as we come, I'm actually trying to touch my elbows together. It's easier to touch my elbows or try to touch my elbows if I go supinated grip rather than a pronated grip. So come down to get a stretch. And then I'm coming at the top kind of super, there we go. Trying to get those elbows as close as possible at the top. It's such a heartbeat, found in your chest in this story. One part, last thing we're doing for chest, seven sets, 12 to 16 reps, only enough time for your partner to go and then you're jumping into it, so. Could be like 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Try getting that cool dramatic light when my shirt was off. So I would look more ripped than I actually am. I hope it worked. Thumbs up if it did. All right, so now we've done our seven, we did our seven sets, cable crossover, all finished up with chest. Can't bounce it at all. That's always a good sign on a high rep day. We're now supersetting. Four sets, staying high reps. 15 reps here. Assisted pull-ups. Obviously, that's high reps. I'm not going to be able to do pull-ups 15 by themselves right now. So we're assisted pull-ups. And then easy bar cable pull-overs. So straight into that. And then you got 30 seconds rest. That's why we that's why we superset chest and back right there. Like crazy. All those things we talk about, all those principles. We're not just taxing on the CNS because we're doing high reps, whereas before in the week, we were able to do more strength stuff. Those two things go hand in hand. We we're able to get more done in a shorter amount of time. And then also that lactic acid, which is going on right now. That lactic acid buildup is important for GH release. <sighs> I told you we got Apollo Ono up in here. We got the crew, but the problem is this isn't real ice. This is plastic. It's ice walking. I don't know, it's plastic walking. Let's try it out. Can you actually can you can you actually slide? Wait, can you try it? 
Well, that was the most miserable ice skating I've ever done. The first time I went ice skating was a lot cooler than this. Arnold and Clint Eastwood were actually on the ice in Sun Valley. Arnold was pushing his kid around. This was Sonny's first time ice skating. It was a fail. It was absolutely miserable. And it's horrible. Jason actually spent a couple of years on the pro circuit for figure skating. <laughs> And he doesn't, he can't even do it out there. <laughs> All right, so. That was we're, two minutes, we were on here literally. So actually, it's like three minutes. We were about, probably here for three minutes. We really wanted to have this awesome experience, and to be honest, the coolest the part, the coolest part is the atmosphere. Yeah. They can easily put a real. It's yeah, freezing out here. Yeah, yeah Jason, why is it cold then? It's at least 50 degrees. It's like cold down here. Like, really? We just dropped 20 degrees by walking down the lady, The lady, did you hear? Yeah. She, he goes, why is it so cold out here? She goes, because it's winter. I know they were like cool and ice. But they were like, yeah, we did, well, we just came down here. It wasn't that cool up there. We were up there. And uh, then she's like, well, we're closer to hell. I'm like, that doesn't make sense at all, lady. <laughs> just did the math. It came out to, we were out there for, it was $2.30 a minute. That's pretty, pretty crappy. Tell you what is worth it though, getting out here and getting a, Awesome picture in this sweater. It looks like a dad sweater that Courtney told me. It's not J. Crew, it's Express. You don't know what J. Crew is? J. Crew's a store. Guys, Courtney had the cutest little blooper tonight. Cutest little blooper. We're gonna actually let you guys watch it here right now because she always says the cutest little things. Roll that footage. Any recommendations on foods or meals, even ways to feel better oh, while no, dealing with our favorite visitor? This struggle is real. real. Wait, who's your monthly visitor? Santa Claus? What? Yeah, flow. A period. Oh! <laughs> no! That was 100% real! So, we failed ice skating, so we're gonna come eat some steak now. They have buffalo steak. Or bison. Courtney, did you uh, one time think buffalo and bison are the same thing or different things? I do. What do you? I sound so stupid in this video. No, you don't. Yes, I do. So I don't know if they're. Are they're they? Really quick. And we're celebrating this one's birthday. 28 years old. 27. Stop 26. It. Stop. Jake's 32. 31. Oh. Uh, 29. You're the oldest You're 29? here. Oh, yeah, I'm, I will be 33. How old are you? 24. How old are you? Rob in the cradle. Oh, that's, so the I, top that's the one right there. I catch up with this is an 800 degree, an 800 degree still. You're getting close. Be careful. It's her little nail. Did you touch it? Oh, is it hot? Yes, <laughs> That was quick. That was quick. Ow. You really touched it. I just did, I just did this and it didn't hurt me. So this, this is bison. It looks the exact same mistake pretty much except for it's rare right now. You wanna try it? Yeah. You can't handle bison. Alright. You know what they you know how to say bison in like Native American? No. I learned it on Dances with Wolves. Tatanka. <laughs> Best part of the meal, this Idaho baked potato, huh? Oh yeah. How many Idaho baked potatoes do we have at this table? I have mashed potatoes. Uh, you're a mashed potato? You did get mashed. Oh, you got mashed potatoes? You're not really from Idaho, though. Yeah, Everyone... I actually am, he's really not. Oh, I guess that's true. Well, you live there most of your life. Fifth Were you grade. born there? Born and raised. I was also born in Idaho. Where were you born? Illinois. Jason, where were you born? Arizona. Arizona, nice. And you've never been out of the country. That's gonna change this year. All right. so. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy birthday. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. I'm here. I'm gonna eat this blue buffalo right here. I think it needs to cook a little bit more. So I had to cook my own bison steak on that hot rock. I have to cook our dessert here on this plate. Hey. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much... Do we look like the type of mother...
don't want to wait to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we got Toblerone, is that how you say it? We got fancy chocolate in here, some cream, and we're gonna dip some wait, fruit. Cookie. <laughs> you that chocolate cookie. I'll tell you what. Cook it up. All right, guys, we're signing off here. I'm always bad at signing off videos. <sighs> this is the crew. We're gonna be seeing a lot more of these people. We're also gonna be seeing a lot more of family here and a lot more people coming to the gym. So I'm excited to get all of you on camera when you're not looking and make you feel really embarrassed. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. I want some, I want some love. I'm a needy individual, okay? Thanks for watching, guys.